to another episode of Worst First. I am so excited because I have one of my good girlfriends here, Miss Courtney Six. Hello. Oh, <laughs> I got I got you an audience. I know, right? You. Do you feel? I love that. Is this giving I need you flashbacks of like pageantry days. <laughs> Were you a pageantry I, I should girl? have this at home. Yes, this is just all day. I can all day. Just when you feel when you accomplish one little thing, you just <laughs> <laughs> getting out of bed, getting a cup of coffee. <laughs> Doing your brushing your teeth. I've I know. missed you. You're so I miss funny. you. I know. Look, hello. Funny. Hi. Um, I'm so glad you came over. I know you've been, you know, all around, and you guys have been doing trying to get moving and doing all kinds of stuff. And you had the baby, and it's like yeah. I can't believe she's going to be what two years old. She's 18 months. Oh my god! So I, I, I can't, can't do math. It. So that's a little <laughs> over a year. I know that it's a year and a half. A year and a half. <laughs> hey, do the thing. Hey. You can tell I didn't go to college. <laughs> Me either. I can't and look believe, at us. Uh, is it crazy to you how quickly time flies? Because I feel like I was just at your baby shower. Yeah. It's scary. It's so much. It's just, it's scary that it's going by so fast because we're only having you know, Ruby. I know. We're not going to have any more. Okay. And Aww. I know, but it's one and done. I but mean, you- she's amazing and and you literally were the tiniest pregnant woman thank you you were so lo- like it was crazy like I remember you were like nine months and you were just so little and like then you had the baby and you just went right back like you're so lucky thank you yeah. yeah I was lucky I think I'm part of it's just because I'm super tall yeah. too so the way I I did gain about 50 pounds. Did you? Uh, even maybe even a little more, but I stopped weighing myself because you were like towards well, the end. Like yeah. a, what, What's the point? What point? Yeah, yeah, you're pregnant. You're supposed to gain weight. But they did. So it was probably the last, I don't know, three months. Yeah. Or maybe even four months that I just felt so heavy. And so I stopped weighing myself. Yeah. And then when we went to the hospital, I was, so normally I'm about 130. Yeah. And I was one, I think 190 something. Oh I mean, it was God. shocking to hear that. You really didn't even look at and So I want to talk to you about like, obviously I've never been pregnant. So what was like when you, was it an easy pregnancy or was it like? It was. You was good for you. I you really, didn't get sick. No, I really lucked out. But we did IVF. Hold your mic as close as we can to it. We go. did, um, Nikki and I did IVF and because he had a vasectomy. Right, so does Tommy. And that was the hardest process. Not, okay. I mean, it, it went so smoothly. Mm-hmm. It couldn't have gone better. But just, you have to do all these hormone shots. Oh and, my gosh. I mean, what does that make you feel time, like? Like a crazy person. Because I have yeah. high estrogen, oh, like off yeah. the charts. So I have to take a progesterone supplement all month. Mm-hmm. Or I get really like neurotic boobs are swollen like crazy right yeah so you were taking what estrogen oh my gosh what the list was so long oh my god I, I, I couldn't even tell you but so there was two processes so uh-huh. the the first was and luckily I've you know you never know until you go through this process right if you're if you're gonna have an easy time yeah. if it's gonna be an uphill battle mm-hmm. and Luckily, it was so easy. But so the the first part was taking the eggs out, my eggs out. What is that like? They just oh. go in with a big ice cream scoop. They're like, <laughs> all right, spread them. Here we go, dead. It's like caviar. You're like, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, they put you, so you do injections. Okay. And everything. And so whatever you would normally make a month, it's kind of multiplied. And I would go back into, my doctor was in the city in Beverly Hills. So it was every other day driving back and forth because they have to monitor exactly what they're giving you and do ultrasounds every day. And so when they do the retrieval, they put you out, but it's, it's, it's not painful at all. Okay. Um, and so that went really well, but my body was just, what the hell is going on? Yeah. What, what have you done to me? Yeah. And it was like an emotional roller coaster, just with all the hormones and everything. And so we were planning right after they took them out to get pregnant right away. And so they basically take the eggs, they test them. Yes. 
and then they keep the highest quality ones and then they fertilize them, test them again for about another week, and then they grade them. Oh, wow. Right? So triple A, double A, and we, it, it, it couldn't have gone better. Oh, so we good. had a bunch to choose and, from. And normally, you know, you just get a couple. Uh-huh. And we had a lot. And so long story short, I, I was just so out of whack. And I thought, okay, the, the, the next part of the process, once they implant the embryo uh-huh. you, or before they implant it, you, you have to go through a whole other, you know, uh, two months, three months of hormones and it's a different set of oh hormones. hell no yeah i'm like how did you do this barely god so, i would have literally tommy would have threw me out the window because i'm already insane <laughs> and i have to already take hormone supplements right, you would have been I'm, a mess I'm like this a hot mess i, I wouldn't have done it i wouldn't have been able to do it I well i i didn't feel like i could either so we ended so up normal so it's oh, like you probably thanks. just got to my level and then <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up putting them on ice for wow. a year because I thought I You're can't, like, I can't do I, it. No, right it's, away I'm going to go crazy. I would have. Yeah. And, um, <sighs> but so anyways, the pregnancy, I think God really blessed me that it yeah. was, it was very strenuous leading up to it. Um, and so I had a really easy time. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get sick at all. Nothing. The only thing I had towards the end was it, it's, it was bad. It was acid reflux. So really? Just oh, like I've heard about that. Popping Tums. Tums, yeah. like, like Skittles. What about peeing all the time, right? Because mm-hmm. that's what they say. It's like pr- pressure it's on, on your, your bladder. bladder. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. God bless you. Thanks. I mean, I couldn't have done it. You're a warrior. I mean, you truly are. Me I, and everyone that's had I, a no, baby. I, no, it's so, everyone's had a baby and people that have done the IVF because I on TikTok, there's like IVF TikTok. I mean, I don't know if you're on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. No, but obviously. you need to show me. There's a whole group of people. If you look up hashtag IVF, if anyone who's listening to this is doing IVF, there's like, it's a struggle. And there's women on there that are like telling how they're like, it's so hard for them and the hormones and it's well, emotional. Well, just and- imagine. So for, for me that it went so, I mean, it was so easy in yeah. the sense that it was so successful yes the entire time that's another thing they but say when it's they, not then you have oh to start all gosh. over again so we have a friend and it's it's a friend of nikki's uh-huh. and he and his wife had tried for years mm-hmm. and years yeah and they ended up with i think two em- i don't know how many at first but kept implanting the mm-hmm. embryos and it just wasn't yeah. taking and so they had two left they they spent a fortune. I yeah. mean, over a million dollars oh. easily. Yeah, and it just wasn't happening. So they decided to adopt. Oh, good. They adopted, I think, one or two. I think two boys. Aww. Amazing. Aww. The the doctor calls and says, well, "What do you want to do with these two embryos? Because you know you're just storing them every year." And mm-hmm. okay, well, we may as well just try again. It's not going to work twins <laughs> stop see that's another thing four. <laughs> and four and the, the two children they adopted yeah were babies oh so my like, god yeah there was I a there they have four under three or something there was a lady so was just now you just triggered my memory there's an i because i'm always looking at all random things ivf on tiktok she said her and her husband had tried for years couldn't get pregnant spent you know millions of dollars gave it one last try and she had five. <gasps> And it sh- she was in the TikTok with her belly out to here with five babies. Like, oh, my God. It's kind of, like, amazing, isn't it? Is. It is. It's, just- it's, it is amazing. It really is. Um, and for me, I, you know, most people that go through IVF, it is so expensive. So, and they yeah. generally had a hard time getting yeah. pregnant naturally. So, mm-hmm. Mickey and I were kind of a rarity. Yeah. And... So they they generally put in at least two embryos or yeah. three, and in the hopes that just one will stick. So you guys are lucky. Yeah, they just put Ruby in, and and that was it. And that was Ruby. That was it. And she's like, I'm here. I'm dancing. <laughs> she's amazing. She, I, she has so much rhythm. She's a happy I girl. Way more than I do. Oh, she's so so. She's it's so like, happy. how is it like being a mom? Is it like the, the best. best? Yeah, the best. It's. It's so Nikki has four kids. Yes. And when we met, 
And my first man, I just turned 25. Wow. And kind of had not, yeah, I guess second thoughts, not about him, but right. just, I don't know. If a I, lot if of it, kids. Yeah, yeah. And they're amazing. But yeah. just, that was a new experience. And they were me. young at the time too. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. uh, the youngest, Frankie was nine. Right. And there was a, you know, a lot of things just that I, I guess I would like discipline, you know, with Nikki's not the strictest parent. Right. And neither is um, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> and just my upbringing, there were some things that I just didn't, I couldn't wrap my head around. Right. And, you know, I'd get into it and with Nikki and we'd argue about things and. It's so crazy now being on the other side of it and being a parent. And you see the oh love for gosh. your child. Yeah, it's just, and you just and love it's your so, child so much. It's just so different than a love, not more, lo- it's just such a different mm-hmm. love than yeah. you have for a spouse or a partner. Mm-hmm. And with Ruby, it's just every day is so amazing. And I've found that that things that I would focus on before or, you know, like getting in a fight with a girlfriend or, right. you know, over stupid stuff. Yes. Stuff that would get under my skin. Now it just doesn't because I I don't want to, I want to spend my energy with her. Mm-hmm. And you, know? you see and, the bigger picture kind of, right? Because like the miracle of life is, yeah. opens your eyes. Like you had, you created a And all of being. a sudden you're living for someone else. Yes. Before yourself. Wow. There's a big shift that happens. See, I can't imagine doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'll have dogs. Yeah. I just, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed by mothers everywhere. Even my friends that have had babies. And, you know, I see you guys change, which is so cool to be friends with you and then see after you have the child how much you change. And it's like you just become these like warm, maternal, it's true. like loving. I mean, I've seen it with every single one of my girlfriends who's had a baby. It's like you become. It like turned me into which I. Mommies. I've you always thought mommies. I was a nice yeah. person. Yeah. Um, but just a, a, a way better version of myself. Yeah. For sure. I know. And I see that. And it's like because it's just so You're much. You're like, I, yeah, I don't see that. No, I do nope. see that for you, a hundred percent. I see it for everybody. My my other girlfriend Jackie, I like, I I saw this. I see this big change, and it's so cool to be like the outsider and 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 see your friends. Like it's just you you she become this warm mommy, mommy figure. Yeah, you know. And I like I'm like it's so crazy that that's just that was a na- that's a natural thing that happens when you have a baby, and that's so cool. And I just live vicariously through you guys, <laughs> you know, but that's amazing. So, um, so now we got Ruby, she's 18 months, <laughs> got Dancing your hands up a storm. full. Mm-hmm. And the whole time that you were doing, you were pregnant, you were working on Bouquet Box for the yes. last. Since before I was pregnant. Since I remember, because yeah. I remember it's been years and I remember going in your office like three or four years ago. Yeah. And seeing all your drawings and you had all these ideas and you're like, oh, I'm working on this thing. And I remember being like, well, what is it? Like, tell me about it. You're like, I can't tell you yet. I can't tell you yet. And then like three, three years later, I'm like, finally, I get What's to- What's happening? No, I'm so, I'm so, ha- I'm so happy for you because, you know, you love DIY. You love flowers. Your house always looks amazing. You know, yeah. I mean, if people could ever do like a, if they bring cribs back and they could do like a tour- you that know, was a sweet show. It was Tommy so sweet. Was on that like, show. bring the show back. It was yeah. so rad. MTV got rid of all the good shows. I remember shows. watching Tommy's. Uh, Tom, yeah, with his house in Malibu. Yes. And I was, I don't know, probably in middle school or something. Same, and I right. Thought, wow. I just, all I remember was um, there was a really cool Starbucks In the machine. house. Yeah, we still like have it this, downstairs. This really cool Starbucks yeah. machine. I thought, oh, I need one. And he one had like that one big day. purple room with the big like playpen. That house burned down to the ground. And the fires. Yeah. So, so sad. sad. We went over there. Um, but yeah. So I want to talk about, you know, I just got mine in the mail. I want to show everybody. So what did you think? I Okay. First of all, the box. For the people that are listening, I'm just going to describe it to you. It's like this gorgeous like cream color box with flowers on the outside. And it says bouquet box. And then when you open it, this was... This was so pretty. The the um, wax seal with Thanks. the okay. So then there's so like I a, did. I just have to brag for one. We can see it, guys. because I'm not the best at Photoshop. Oh, I love 
But I did all of these. You did all the flowers. graphic designing. Mm-hmm. Wow! All the, all the flowers for the box, and then for the tissue paper too. This is gorgeous. and all the cards. This is gorgeous. So I'm proud of myself. I'm so proud of you. And so and and so this is so cool. So then it comes and you get you get your little intro. There was like an intro note which is right here, and it talks about the story of Bouquet Box, and it has a picture of Courtney. At four. At four years old with flowers, and she's a California girl, grew up in L.A., and then you open the box, and it has, it's kind of like, and and I'm only going to compare it because this is what you compared it to, is it's like essentially like a blue apron or um, a Hello Fresh for flowers. That's exactly right. So there's nothing like it right now. There's absolutely nothing. This is the only thing you can do where... You basically, you go online, you order your bouquet box, which is bouquetbox.com, right? Yeah, you're good. And you yeah. get your, you get this, this is your like intro box. So you get all the tools that you need. So it includes this vase, which has a grid on top. And so when you order flowers from a florist, they usually put tape in the in these sort of grid patterns to hold the flowers in the way that they need to be held. And so this grid, this vase is washable the grid is washable and so every month if you want or or annually right for um, do i I love having you describe i'm sorry seasonally so it's either every month or seasonally every month seasonally Uh so four times a year Uh you can pick different packages depending on what works for you right in your lifestyle or you could just try it out if if you don't want to commit. A one-time thing. Yeah, just for an individual yeah. arrangement. But the welcome box is complimentary. Yes. With, with each arrangement because it's a do-it-yourself floral experience. So we've provided all the tools. Yes. The vase. Just so, to make it very simple. And it, so this is what happens. So you have a, then you have this satin bag and in the bag you have, Courtney designed this. This is a um, stem stripper. Stem stripper. And so you would take this and you would put it, wrap it around like the end of a rose, you know, or something with thorns or something that you need to get rid of the the um, leaves and r- pull it down and it'll pull it all off without you getting hurt. So that's great. And or tearing up your fingers. Or tearing up your fingers. And I can't I mean, tell you how many times I've... I know. I mean, same. I, I, half the time when you even buy flowers at the store, they don't take the thorns off and you're just stabbing yourself. Um, exactly. So this is a great tool to have, whether you're constantly renewing your subscription or not. This is good to have. And then um, you have your your um, cutting shears so that you can trim the stems of the flowers. And so that comes in your satin bag and everything's organized. And then and then you have your ruler. And, and basically what's going to happen is when you get your flowers, it's going to come with like a, a Hello Apron, uh, or sorry, Hello Apron, Hello Fresh um, a la kind of menu where it says, okay, here's your, what's in your flower box and you're going to measure the flowers for each, you know, measurement that they say using your ruler. And then how cool is this? This is when the grid comes in handy. It's literally foolproof. It has numbers to show you, okay, so these flowers go in, you know, compartment one, these flowers go in compartment two and there's a picture and it shows you exactly what you need to do. And then you create your own beautiful bouquet that you can have a fresh one every month or you can have it annually or you can have it one time if you just want to do it but what I love about this is that you did a great job thanks but but this is what I love about it because I love that it's inclusive with families because first of all everyone's bored right now you know what everyone has nothing to do so there's (laughs) families sitting at home going like I have my finger in my ass and like (laughs) I don't know what to do how many Netflix shows can I watch (laughs) And then this is great because it's a project, yeah. you know, it's not like, oh, I, there's something special about doing something yourself as opposed to just going and going, oh, okay, I'm just going to go buy this. And really? Then- so on each menu card that you were so eloquently describing, Thanks. Um, so we have step-by-step uh, photo instructions. Right. And then there's a QR code that you can watch a video of me walking you through how to put the arrangement oh, wow. together. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's, you, can, you, can't, you can't mess, mess it up. It up okay. really. Um, and so when we were filming the videos, it was the first time since design, well, Mark's garden, right. Who is my favorite florist in the world, mm-hmm. designed the collection and we shot it all and I loved it. But when we filmed the videos, it was the first time that I had deconstructed each arrangement mm-hmm you know, made all of the kind of made instructions for myself and doing the video was the first time really I'd put it back together, Uh hoping that everything would work just right. And I felt like it would, 
Um, but it was, oh, sorry. But it was so fulfilling and exciting for me to actually just take off my hat of, you know, floral arranging, mm-hmm. which I definitely know what I'm doing and it's easy for me, but I've worked a long time yeah. to, to know what to do. Um, but just being able to follow the instructions and not put my Courtney spin on it, right. just, just follow the instructions step by step and watching it these killer together. arrangements yeah. come to life was like, it gave me the chills. And this is so like, fun. And this isn't like, you know, you go to the grocery store and you can buy like those pre-made arrangements. Like these are lush full I mean when you're getting the flowers for this you're getting a lot of flowers this isn't like oh you get like five flowers it's about and... 40 to 50 so your arrangement. your arrangement's gonna be lush and all of our roses are from Ecuador oh wow yeah. so that makes a big difference how do you even find normally them? at the grocery <laughs> you're like hello Ecuador <laughs> Basically. How do they get here and stay alive? So I'm always wonder that. So I'm actually going to Miami tomorrow oh, to, to make sure. So we launched February 1st. Uh-huh. And so I want to make sure all of our orders are, you Good. know, everything's put together perfectly. Right. So we have a distributor. Okay. And they're out of Miami and most are. Uh-huh. Um, and so there are certain farms that we picked eco-friendly farms Mm -hmm. in Ecuador and then Colombia. Most hydrangeas come from Colombia or anemones. But the roses, we had to have them from Ecuador. Wow. Because that's just the, they're the best. And um, normally when you go to the grocery store, what you see for the most part is Colombian roses, which are still very pretty. Right. But there's just a big difference between the two regions. And um, yeah, so we wanted to do Ecuadorian roses. And the first thing I discovered, which I couldn't believe I didn't know since I work with flowers all the time, is when you go to a, a grocery store, even sometimes a florist, mm. you're getting your flowers at about day 11 to 12, 13, 11 to 13 um, days into their lifespan. Since I was always wondering, like, why do they last like three seconds? Yeah. Like, you literally put them in and then. So, because there's, it's, you know, they have to come from, in America, mainly they're from South America, in Europe, um, Israel, and Africa. Mm-hmm. And so they're coming from the farm. So they have to come through customs, oh right? And then be distributed and then generally go to a different uh, fulfillment facility and then get trucked to the store. So it just takes a minute oh my God. To, to get them there. Hence, they don't last Very quite as long. long. Yeah. So with Bouquet Box, We've ordered straight from our farm. They come in through Miami. And Mm -hmm. because there's all these different, uh, so most mix arrangements that you see at a grocery store, it's coming from one farm, right? So that's what they grow and they put it in a mixed bouquet. Yeah. So with Bouquet Box, we've curated flowers from different farms because we want, that's what we need in our designs. Right. Um, And so they come into Miami and then that day, so that's what I'm so excited to, yeah. to go and watch them do it. Um, they put everything together in your bouquet box and and then it's overnight shipping. So Amazing. you're getting your flowers around day five to six as of their lifespan. As opposed to day 11. Yeah, so really they last about 10 days. That's great. As opposed great. to like normally it's, I mean, for me when I go to the store, four, five days, so... And what's I'm some excited tips about that. like to make flowers last longer? Like I know the hydrangea thing when you can like either dunk them right under in, in cold water in cold water, or you can fill spray them, spray them, or fill the the um, jar with really hot water because it melts the sap on the bottom. Just trim the bottom, put them in. They'll refresh. So with hydrangeas, there anyone that's ever bought hydrangeas, they're so beautiful, and they're in yeah. a lot of our arrangements. Yeah. Um. But and they're, you know retail at a grocery store they're pretty expensive they are, yeah. and they're they're they can be tricky yeah. so um the most important thing with all flowers really is trimming them and and there's a care instruction card uh-huh. so you'll see when you get your box this month and it gives you all the tips for how to care for them before you even start arranging so okay. they've been out of water for a couple days now yeah probably yeah four days so you need to trim off about an inch, inch and a half, and put them in water. Put your um, floral food 
Uh-huh. Well, we do that when you do the actual arrangement, but uh-huh. you have to really rehydrate them right. before you put them in your arrangement. And another thing that I I never knew this until we were working with our distributor is when you get your flowers, it's best, especially with roses, to leave them in um, the wrapping. Oh. They come in, so you trim them in the wrapping okay, and put them in cold water for a few hours. And it helps them really keep their shape because there's a little point in time when they hit the water that they can, they start, they go into like shock. they have a life of their own, right? right? So they can start bending and doing things and then you could end up with not, hopefully not with ours because right, the quality is so great, but that's a, a good tip just to yeah. leave the plastic wrap until they've been in water for a couple hours. Okay. Yeah. And then. The biggest thing is really just changing out your water. Yeah, I do know like that. I do notice every that. Every two days. I do notice that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, my flowers don't last. I'm like, well, like imagine sitting in and- sewage. You're just going <laughs> to leave it for fucking 10 days. Like I change my water for not only the animals, the the flowers every like every day. I change my, my flower water every day. Yeah. And I notice they last so long if you do that. And what's nice about like you were showing the grid on yeah. top of our vase is you can really kind of, can you see? Yeah. You can just hang on to it. Yeah. Right? And it's really easy. Easy to, to just drain your it. Your flowers will stay in And then place. fill it back up. You can literally set this in the sink and fill, you know, after you dump exactly. it out and fill the water right back up. And then when you're done and you get, you know, this comes right off, you're done with your arrangement for that month or that time that you're using it and you just dishwash it. Mm-hmm. And then you're good to go when your next one comes and you're you can do it go. with your daughter or your son or whoever like loves flowers. My husband loves I know, flowers. I'm so, so I was so excited to see the two of you. I'm not going to even together. get to do this. He's going to get it and he's going to, I'm going to wake up and he's going to have done I'll, it. Cause I'll have to send you another one. Mr. Green thumb. No, I just saw. Tommy has like 15 bonsai trees outside. Like and they Mr. have names. Mr. Liagi is what I call him. <laughs> Liagi. Dead. Do we die? That's He's funny. Mr. Liagi. Um, so if you guys are interested in Bouquet Box, that's just bouquetbox.com. And they have um, different plans. So obviously um, different pricing if you're interested in, you know, one time or you're interested in a full year, or you're interested in seasonally, the prices range. And then obviously, you know, the more you want to do it, the lower, the more, re- you know, better the prices you know the more you buy the better the prices just like with everything so um make sure to go check that out yeah, i'm so check it out so excited Thank for you. you dude oh my god so you're going to miami it's like tomorrow? having a second baby you know i mean i just remember you up in, i just remember going over your house and you've always in your house first of all every time you always walk in there's a giant <laughs> flower arrangement on your front table always yeah, there's poor Nikki, flower arrangements our kitchen, everywhere it's like a flo- like a Yo, no, I remember studio. every time I come into your house, it's like, and every par- dinner party you've ever had, you have like the most amazing, you've always had uh, flowers well, everywhere. This is, thank you. I love flowers. They make right? you happy. It's, it's my favorite thing yeah. to do. And when I, so you mentioned Blue Apron. Yeah. When a, a girlfriend of mine turned me on to it of probably three years ago or so. And I remember the first dish I made was a Thai dish. Mm-hmm. And I'm a good cook but really kind of more for special occasions Mm -hmm. um for the most part i cook pretty simple dishes good but just a fish steak right veggies and so i was so impressed with myself that i made a thai dish yeah 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 yeah. i would never have thought i could do that and i thought this is so cool that all the ingredients came they were the right amounts. I didn't have to go to the store and spend two hundred dollars to make a Thai dish and buy curry powder and this and that. And it just hit me. You I need like, to do this with flowers. flowers. Yeah. yeah, that's so that's cool. Things. And it's so great because, like you said, the pros are you know it lasts longer. You know, it's it's fun to do and you feel good. You know, it gives yeah. you something to do. It's you can photograph activity. it. You know, tag Bouquet Box, tag Courtney. Um, she would love, I'm sure, to see you'd love to oh see Oh my gosh, everyone's. it's so, yeah. That's it's, so, it's so, so cool. It's so fun. I love that. Yeah, so I can't wait. So, so you guys I want to see it tomorrow when you go to the factories and see all your flowers coming in. It's always so crazy to me. Like, I never understand how things work because I'm like, okay, so the flowers get a plane ticket. That's expensive. <laughs> I'm like, how is anybody making any money? <laughs> like, I got to ship all these flowers. And right they now, private. They get their own private plane. Like, it's yeah. crazy. Well, so it's really interesting. There's a, 
a separate FedEx program okay. for South America. Okay. I mean, a totally I'm different. like, how does that work? Different part of the company. Right. And so all of their planes are refrigerated. Oh, cool. So it's only flowers. Oh, wow. On these FedEx planes. And then when they land in Miami, uh, they're in refrigerated trucks. Yeah. FedEx. Yeah. And then when they go to the fulfillment, the warehouse, it's refrigerated. Yeah. So I'm dressing warm. This must be like yeah, millions so of flowers. Yeah. Because you think about how much fuel is and flying from, you know, a private plane from, from or any plane from, from Ecuador to Miami. Like, what is that? Like well, a two hour is, flight? You know, three hour flight? I, I think most people can say flowers can get very expensive. Yeah. And so we've... Really tried to keep, keep the price point. Reasonable. They would retail around two fifty. Yeah, for these arrangements from Mark's Garden. Right. Um. So we, they start at ninety nine dollars. Right. Um. The profit's not as high as you would think. Right. In flowers. Right. Because it's just costly. To well, you have get a lot of here. overhead. You know, too. It's like you got to pay for the flowers to come there. You got to pay for the flowers from the people there. Then you got to pay the people in the factory to put all the boxes together. Then you got to pay for the boxes. You got to pay for the tools. You got to pay for the tools coming from the factory. Like, it's like a lot of work. It is. I would be very stressed out. It's wonderful. But but I'm so glad that you were able to do it. And I'm so proud of you. I love you. Okay, guys. So you know about, I just wanted to talk about that. Everyone knows about bouquet We're going to share, we wanted to give you a first scoop on bouquet box on worst first and we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with miss courtney six on worst first thank you for tuning in to another episode of worst first you are loved and appreciated and because you're so loved and appreciated we have an offer for you head to www.analuisa.com slash worst for 10 percent off your jewelry are you a jewelry queen like me where you wear tons of jewelry because i do i love jewelry i've always worn tons of jewelry i wear stackable gold rings and all kinds of gold hoops on my ears and yes i wear a lot of gold because i'm italian and i'm a gypsy and I love it. Um, But the worst thing about jewelry is when you buy a piece of jewelry and it makes your fingers turn green or the jewelry fades or the jewelry turns green. That is the most disappointing thing about jewelry that I've found, especially where I wear a lot of gold tone pieces. I know there's silver pieces too, but so I found this company called Ana Luisa which is www.analuisa.com, which is A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A.com. And the cool thing about them is that their jewelry is high quality. So you're not going to end up with green jewelry, which is amazing. And the best part about that is that they even guarantee that so much that every piece of their jewelry comes with a 365-day warranty. Yeah, that's right. If you buy any of their jewelry and it starts to end up the way you don't like, you can get a refund or exchange it on their website and no problems, no questions asked, which is amazing. You won't find that with a lot of jewelry companies. Also, they are a carbon neutral company. They offset 100% of their carbon emissions, starting with the sourcing of their raw materials all the way to the disposal of the pieces. So you are being friendly to the earth. You are not getting screwed over and getting green jewelry. And on top of that, the jewelry is so cute. And you get 10% off your first order by going to www.analuisa.com slash worst. Okay. Analuisa.com slash worst for 10% off your jewelry. I mean, they have really cute stuff, you guys. They have these little safety pin style earrings. Um, they have layered necklaces, which takes the guesswork out of, you know, layering three different necklaces and getting them all tangled. You can buy one necklace that's several le- necklaces layered. Um, they have great ear cuffs, earrings. They have rings. I mean, and all, like I said, it's, you know, it takes it takes the, you know, the, the fear out of buying jewelry and it get, being damaged or you know, turning green. You don't have to worry about it because of the 365-day warranty. And on top of that, it starts at really reasonable prices like $39. So if you'd like to try it, head to www.analuisa.com slash worst for 10% off your jewelry and go and treat yourself. I mean, it makes a great gift for a loved one or a gift for yourself or, you know, whoever. You deserve it. All right. Now back to the episode. Okay, we're back. Oh, okay. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I want to talk about you because you grew up in LA, Toluca Lake, I did. and Utah. In Utah. Okay. So, yeah. how long did you live in Toluca Lake? So, I was born in Santa Monica. Okay. And we moved to Toluca Lake 
My parents divorced when I was three. So oh. I don't even remember them right. together. And my mom and I moved to Toluca Lake when I must have been four. Okay. Yeah, going into kindergarten. And she got remarried at 10. I was when 10. You were 10. Okay. Yeah. And he lived in Salt Lake City. Okay. So we moved there. When you were 10. You, so you lived in Toluca Lake till 10, moved to Salt Lake City. Okay. And my elementary school was right off Laurel Canyon. So oh, I always drive past it. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's crazy how it feels so big when right. you're that little and now it's. Now you drive by and it's like this big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, right? The chairs are so small. That's the weird thing. When no, you go back I into your mom at elementary school and the chairs are this big. I thought, yeah, I thought it would be so fun yeah. to take Nikki and go walk around. But also I thought that's kind of, if I was a parent, <laughs> I wouldn't want just walking around random like, adults at the elementary school. Especially Nikki. They're like, like covered um, in tattoos. I'm going to call the cops. There's a guy with tattoos and piercing crazy walking here. around children at the elementary school okay so we, i'm dead right so i don't think we'll be you know doing drive that. by and i just always point it out every time he's like i know i love that's, that that's your elementary school i know and and then so then you went to utah when you were 10 and did you like utah like did you like yeah. growing up in utah yeah so i was there uh sixth seventh eighth grade okay and i did it was it was um so my mom's from utah yes so we have a lot of friends and family there. And for me, it was really fun just growing up in L.A., mm -hmm. um, just such a different world and being able to be in the snow. And I grew up skiing, so wow. that was really fun to be able to ski a lot because normally it was just a, a few days. Mm -hmm. And also, I loved walking to school. Yeah. That was such a big deal you for me. You walked to school? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. And people were nice. Yeah. It was a nice, you had a good high school experience and everything. Middle school. Middle school. Okay. But yeah. I Where did you it. end up going to high school? So we moved going into my freshman year to South Orange County. Okay. So you moved back Laguna to California. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where I went to high school. And how were people there? Great. I loved really? it. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean. I'm like, my don't relate. <laughs> <laughs> I had like the worst high school experience. You're like, everyone loved me. I was popular. I had friends. I had boyfriends. I'm like, oh, really? What's that like? My jaw was wired shut. My face was, love that for you. No, that's great. Glad you had a good high school experience. Is it really <laughs> wired shut? It was wired shut. Yeah. I, my, so well, I you blossomed like, after high school. Dead. I already have a huge chin. We we'll have lots of injections too. I already have a huge chin and my chin was even bigger. Um, my bottom teeth had grown in front of my top teeth, so I looked like a, bull, a bulldog. <laughs> oh, no. So they had to break my jaw, Kanye West style, pull my jaw back. It's called TMJ surgery because my jaw would click and like unhinge, and then pull my jaw back. And so for three, did you have one of those? Oh, not on the outside, on the inside. My teeth were wired shut, and there's like plates in my face, and so it was. I'm not laughing. It was horrible. That's no, you horrible. can laugh. It was horrible. But, and and oh, the man. worst part was every day I had to put like um, iodine around my mouth so I didn't get infections. So it looked like I was eating <laughs> shit. I was just like, hey, gosh, does anyone want to go to the prom with me? And I couldn't talk. And, I, like, brown ring. A, a brown ring around my mouth. <laughs> so, hey, gosh. You didn't relate to that? That wasn't your high school experience? Well, good for you. Oh, my god! <laughs> it was the worst. Anyway, so you had a great high school experience so in Orange funny, County. Brittany. Just tan, surfing, skinny, tall. Perfect. I I I did try surfing multiple times and I don't Didn't have work out. upper body strength, Dead. so it was a disaster. But you're also 100 pounds. I've seen pictures of you even from when you and Nikki started dating. You were like an teeny. actual skeleton. I was teeny. I mean, you're still so thin, but no, you were like, like an it. actual I like skeleton. I like this weight so, like, so much more. But how, how, so that I, was I just you, I could never really though. put on weight. Yeah. That was just you. And so then-, and then But the, I hated it when I was, especially in middle school. Because you So were that tall. was the only thing in okay. Utah that sucked. You put the was, tall in Utah. Yeah, <laughs> and I was so damn girl. Well, you Utah, <laughs> dead. so so oh, bad. I, yeah, I just got that. Okay, dead. So wait, so you so, were you taller than everyone? Yeah, and the guys. Well, so I'm five eleven, and so yeah, I was just you know, yeah, of course I was taller than the boys right, in middle school. Right, they're this big the and their backpacks yeah. are bigger than they are. They were putrid, um, but yeah, when I because I was so tall, it's like I was just so skinny. Yeah. And I remember I was walking home from school and this boy and I had a crush on him Aww. and he threw an apple at me. What the fuck? I know. It was so Ew. sad. And it you was were so, so skinny. Sad. It broke your arm. <laughs> almost. Ah, your yeah. arm just broke. Almost. Where did it hit you? I don't remember. 
Oh my god! Ew! Out, like out of the bus or just he was no? Next he was to- on a bike. Yeah, it was like a couple of boys and a couple of girls, and I went home. And my mom mm. saw red, just like mm. I would, right? And so she got a hold of his mom, and his mom was so sweet. Yeah, and and she was horrified. Aww. And so they, and then. I was horrified because you were like, came over. You're like, don't call his mom. I like him, even I though know. he threw an apple so at me. Now I like him more. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> now I like him more boy. than he threw an apple at me. Yeah, dead. What's wrong with us? <laughs> I can't. So, so he comes over with his mom. Oh boy! And I'll never forget. I opened the door, and he had a like a skit, a skit, um, planned out. Yeah. So he goes, I can't believe I remembered this. At 10 or 11, but um, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was, I was trying to act like a big hunk and he gave me a big hunk candy bar, but really I was being a nerd and he gave me nerds. I mean, that was, it was cute. I was, and I was so excited. Wow. And you're like, when's the little kiss coming? (laughs) Dead. (laughs) That's cute, though. Yeah. I wonder if he thought of that himself or if his mom thought of that. For sure his mom. Did you think, did you forgive him? Yeah. Did but, you ever? But under, I don't know that he ever liked me. Did you ever understand? I think dating? my mom said, oh, he just had to crush on you. Yeah, I don't know. I think he just wanted to throw an apple. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird, though, how no, when we you were younger, dating. boys would be mean to you. And then they'd be like, oh, like they'd pull your hair. Or they'd tease you because they push liked you. you, push you. They're, they're, they did do that. So how old were you when you had your first boyfriend? I first, uh, well, okay. I was, so eighth grade. Eighth grade. I think it was eighth grade. I wasn't allowed to date till I was 16. Okay. And then I could group date. Okay. Group date. Group date. <laughs> yeah. I wow. mean, I hated it. <laughs> so the, to go with like seven time. people. <laughs> like four, like two couples or okay. more. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, but God bless my mom for, you know, the more people that are there. The, yeah. The chances get slimmer. That, yeah. That something bad's bad is going to happen. happen. Right. But, oh, my gosh, I was so upset with her in high school that I couldn't date. But that's another story. So, right. yeah, eighth grade, that was my first boyfriend. Uh-huh. And so we're about the same age. We're a year apart. Yeah, we're exactly a year apart. A year yeah. apart. Same we birthday. We have the same birthday. Isn't that crazy? Guys, hello. Virgo. Twilight Zone, Virgo power. I love that shit. <laughs> so it was going out. You were going out with someone. Right. Is it the same thing? Same. Yeah. Yeah. So my mom would go, well, where are you? Going. Where are you going? Yeah. No, like, no, mom. We're just going, going out. anywhere. Yeah. We're going out. I know, but what? Where are you, am yeah. I taking you That's somewhere? That's like an What's SNL skit. No, we're going out. Where are you going? You're so out. lame. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> so we were going out. His name was Alex Malevich. I remember Whoa, his name. Was and he, he was, Jewish? No, he was. He he looked like he would he would be from. I don't know, like. That he had some Norwegian. Oh. He was of Norwegian descent. He was like white, blonde hair, blue eyes, really huge. Yeah. A, a bowl cut. Dad, everyone had the bowl cut. Yeah, that was so cool. Everyone had a bowl cut. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. So, and actually, I asked him out. You did. I did. Good so, for you. So, notes were a big deal. Yeah, notes when we were, were in huge. school because no one had a phone. Yep. And so, in the hall, you'd pass notes and yeah. in class, and we, I, at least my girlfriends, like we would really take our time with these notes and we would do the gel. Remember the gel? The color hold? gels, yeah. yes. And just and make the them name, look so I dope. Mean, just doing the name. Yeah. That would be like a half hour, <laughs> you know? And Alex. flowers everywhere. And, oh my gosh. But that was a big deal. Yeah. And so uh, we we kind of had the same friends and I think they kind of hinted to him that I liked him oh my God. and that I wanted to ask him out. And I don't know. I didn't write him a note. He wrote me a note. Okay. In class. It was an English class. Oh, and it just said yes on it. And Aww. I was like so excited. Pretty ballsy to yeah. ask someone out. Yeah. And so we were going out. We'd talk on the phone. Yeah. And I remember it was maybe a couple days into it. And I was trying to plan with my friends. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, I really want to hold his hand. Yeah. Oh. And so, okay. Should I just like... Um, casually be walking down the hall past his locker and then yeah. kind of bump into him and then like, oh, 
slipped my hand in Aww. his. And oh my gosh. This was, was eighth grade? Eighth grade. My God. The eighth grade girls now? in my school were oh giving each God. other blowjobs. Really? Hell yeah. Like, it was, I, was, I remember being traumatized by but it this too. was also Utah. Yeah. And you were in your Mormon. So that was a big deal, the hand holding. That's like basically first base, right? For you, for it was for me, and yeah. we never even held hands. I know, like I, my plan didn't work at all. It didn't. And we never kissed. Oh, yeah, it was <laughs> just a lot very of phone, innocent phone talking. <laughs> a lot of talking on the Love phone. That. Yeah. Did you now? Did you wear the Mormon garb? Did you wear like? Don't they wear like a bonnet or like certain <laughs> no. clothes? Am I totally wrong? Do I not know what I'm that's talking about? Amish. Am I talking about Quakers? What am I talking I about? I think that's the Amish. So Mormon people don't, they just wear regular clothes. Yeah. So is, I like, mean, it's a, it's, I would say, for example, so my school in Salt Lake, the, it's, I don't know that it still is, yeah. but at that point, prime, at least over 50% of the community was LDS. Okay. Mormon. What yeah. does LDS stand for? It's uh, Latter Day Saint. So it's oh, the okay. Church the of Mormon Latter-day Church Saints. is the it's the Church of Jesus Christ. Okay. Of Latter Day Saints. Okay. And because you were asking it, you and yeah. Tommy were asking about this earlier. Essentially, the church is set up how when Christ was on the earth, how he set his church up. So it, now there's a prophet. Yes. And so, so Christ had his twelve disciples. Uh-huh. There's the Mormon Church has a prophet, and then there's the quorum of the 12, which it's essentially kind of the same thing. And that's how the, the I guess, yeah, how, how it's been set up is to kind of mirror how it was. Okay. And so that's why it's called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. It's the restored gospel. Oh. It's, it's what the Mormon religion is. And you went to church, what, I every, believe. Every Sunday or was there church in school? Both, yeah. Both. Mm-hmm. So, so I went every Sunday, mm-hmm, went every Sunday, and then in high school, um, it's called seminary. Okay. So in different, st- well, in Utah, because there is such a big community, uh-huh. they, you can, you, you have a choice of taking seminary rather than one of your electives. Okay. So it's in, it's built in your schedule. Okay. And next to the middle schools and the high schools, there's a church. Wow. Nearby. So if you chose to do seminary rather than an art class or, you know, a language or something, you would just walk for that period that you had a, to the church building. Wow. Um, but it starts in ninth grade. So I didn't do it in Utah, but I did do it in high school for four years. In California. Yeah. In and Orange so, County. In Orange County. So I think probably Utah and Idaho may be the only states that you can do it as you know, in school. Right. Um, so for me, it was early morning seminary. Yeah. And I'm not. How early are we talking Not a here? morning person. It started at, I want to say 645. What the hell? Yeah. My Lord, for about, literally. For about, <laughs> My Lord. <It's> about, <laughs> Jesus isn't even awake yet. <laughs> Jesus is like, so, what are y'all talking to me this early for? So I'm trying early. to sleep. Oh my God. I know. It was hell so no. early. And. So I would do that five days a week and then go to school. Oh, my God. After. Oh, hell no. And then my junior year, I really was so over, I think everyone is yeah. by that point, um, so over school that I wanted to take a zero period. Yeah. So I could get off because we have block schedule. Right. You probably did too. Yeah. So I wanted to have two days a week where I didn't have to go to a fifth period. Right. So I could leave with my friends at lunch and go to the beach and right. Chill. whatever. Right. So I started taking a zero period five days a week, but that meant my mom's like, yeah, that's nice. But now you're going to do early, early morning seminary, which was at like 550. What the heck? <laughs> Ew. It was rough. It was rough. I don't and know how I, you did that. Did you go to I, bed well, at the, like 8 p.m.? No, I didn't. And of course, in high school, like I really shouldn't have worn a lot of makeup because I sucked at it. It's dead. I know. But I, I spent did. like a good hour, you know, same. Like, just. And I looked horrible. Yeah. I looked like Mimi from Drew Carey with the blue <laughs> eyeshadow. Like horrible. I had like a, yeah. like a aqua green. Oh, yeah. And I would horrible. mix it with, so I'd do the black liner. Nightmare. Yeah. I'd rim my eyes. And my mom would think, you're not allowed to rim your eyes. So I'd do it at school in the bathroom. Oh it looks hard. It looks yeah. Really harsh. Yeah. Well, she was right. It looked like crap. <laughs> um, so I would do that. And then it was a Mac. It was called Surreal. 
That oh was the name. God. It was like this aqua turquoise metallic. Oh my kind God. Of crazy color. And so I would dip my, I thought I was a makeup artist. So <sighs> dip my eyeshadow brush in water and put it in the powder. And then I would do that like on top of the black and kind of around it. It was a whole thing. Oh my God. And they had, I, I know you have to remember this. At like the kiosks at different malls, they would have those shimmer, the loose shimmer eyeshadows. Oh you remember yeah, these? And all they the were glitter, like clear little, yeah, with the clear like bottom stacked. part and the yeah, and you yeah. could get all different oh, okay. colors. So yeah, I had every color. Oh my god, thought, dead. Well, they're all fabulous. Yeah, so I have to put all of them on. At obviously, once. <laughs> obviously, and I was just you know covered like in glitter. Coyote ugly. Oh my out. god, Coyote Ugly was so the was, jam. If you guys who are listening oh to this haven't gosh. seen Coyote Ugly, if you're too young, you just so need good. to watch it right now. It's such a good movie. It's so good. It holds up. So then, so that's kind of when my DIY skills started. started. DIY so makeup. I went and got a, like a stud. A, a stud. What's it even? A bedazzler. Oh yeah. Yeah, because that was the cool thing was any. Jacket like, with a, like a studs like this, on it. Yeah. Bedazzle it. Yeah. And then it looked like. Cool. Or Britney Spears. Yeah, yeah. Or you're in Coyote Ugly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just the, the more, and then we had glitter gel. Oh, yeah. So, and that's oh. what Britney Spears did. Yeah. We so love, be we butterfly, love, we butterfly were, clips, glitter gel. We were the Hit Me Baby everywhere. One More Time generation. We were right when that album came out. And like Spice Girls. Oh. Dude, yeah. all of it. My dad's so funny. My dad's hilarious. So I would always oh my God. listen to the Spice Girls. But that was more. I guess middle school. Yeah, middle probably. school. And he always said, my favorite Skanky Spice. <laughs> skanky Spice. I'm There's like, not even Skanky like, Spice. Uh, like, I think it's Scary sport. Spice or scary Sporty Spice. spice. Or sporty Spice. No, yeah. Skanky Spice. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Love that. I know. Um, yeah. and, your, and your parents, your dad has worked in the entertainment industry. Yes, he was. Now he's doing more art directing. Right. But he was a set designer for years. For so years. That was so fun. You got to go My to shows? the best. Yeah. What shows did you go to? Well, he did more um, theatrical. Okay. So a lot of plays. And then, let's see. When I was younger, it was cool because he was working for Fox. Oh, wow. And so, like, all their award shows and yeah. stuff like that he would do. So I'd get to go. And I'll never forget his, his uh, girlfriend at the time. He's one of the heads of think Fox Kids or uh-huh. something. So 90210 was on Oh, Fox. my God. And we all loved. Yeah. Oh. Dylan. Luke Perry. Poor Luke I know. Perry. So sad. Loved him. I had a, I had a Luke didn't. Perry doll. Oh. Yeah, I did. I Do used to undress that thing. And I was him. like, well, where's the penis? I'm really <laughs> disappointed. Anyway, keep going. So yeah. 90210. It's, yeah. So I was obsessed with him. And it's huge. I remember he, she brought over a poster that was signed by the cast and you now it didn't occur to me that I wasn't I hadn't met Luke Perry yeah um and so he said to Courtney what a babe and I go oh he has a crush on me <laughs> yeah you're like Luke Perry chill I'm 16 no I Bro. was like dead you love nine it. nine Eight. dead I mean we were young when, when you, that and then you went out. to school yeah. and you're like I'm dating Luke Perry basically I mean, so you guys Basically. can hate all you want, but I got the proof. It yeah. says, Courtney, what a babe. I mean, uh-huh. I don't know what else I need to show you. Saying. He's my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. So if you see me getting I my mean, picture taken. I think when she gave it to me, I was like, in like oh my gosh. Dead. Like it's really happening. Yeah. yeah. We're going to end up together. together. Yeah, I knew it. Married. And you like start sweating. You're like, <laughs> fuck, what am I going to wear on my wedding day in two months? Oh my God. I love that. You know, I felt the same way. I was totally like, loved that. I loved- have to tell you. This because I it was the same house that my dad lived in when I got that poster. My gosh, I haven't thought about this for years. So my dad's family is from Santa Maria. Okay. Which is about an hour north of Santa Barbara. Okay. And that's where he grew up. So I remember I think we were in the car one day and he I think of Motley Crew either came on the radio or he had a cassette. Uh-huh. And he mentioned he was so excited because so I I don't know that he was like a big fan of Motley but yeah. liked them and he said oh my gosh I, I you're not gonna believe this Vince is we're related to Vince Neil I yeah, I've never told you this what? I think only oh, which we're not okay and only Nikki 
knows this. So I'm like, oh, that that's so cool. So he showed me. I remember it was the smoking in the boys' room video. Music video. Yeah. I mean, I barely remembered this. Right. I must have been nine. Yeah. And and so he showed me the video, and he and you know, how are we related to? Well, he's he's like our cousin, but twice removed or or by marriage, right? And for <laughs> my dad would kill me, but for years he really like he would go, oh, cousin Vince, right? But never dad. never met him or anything. Dad. And so when Nikki and I, and then we we. After Nikki and I started dating, I'm like, I need to dig into this. Yeah, because you're like, really I don't know if I'm his cause lead singer is my yeah, cousin. And when it's we crazy. started dating, I'm like, um, do you, do, are you close with Vince's family? I'm yeah. like, because I kind of want to figure this out. I think he was, you know, what? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are related. Right. Um, but somehow through marriage and divorces. Right. It's like um, that his... I don't know. It's it's it's, it's like, far a, like, removed. A, like a third, fifth. And cousin. I've tried to in, uh, explain it to Ben, right? And even my dad did, right? And I think Stop. he was like, what? "It's like really, like... it's really easy to for it to like, it's very complicated, right? So for it really not to make sense, but <laughs> technically, <laughs> yes, yeah, somehow like, right. related by marriage dead. at one point. How crazy, funny. yeah. And how fun now? How funny is it that like, so your mom. Is she like a devout Mormon, your mom? Mm -hmm. So when you start dating Nikki, who is from Motley Crue with tattoos and all that stuff, did she kind of freak out? No. Oddly enough, no. She didn't care? No. But so, so ironically, my dad, who's had a more colorful life, past, yeah. Mm -hmm, he, I, you know, I thought it would be my mom's going to lose it. Right. And my dad's. Not really going to care. Right. No, it was the opposite. Wow. Yeah, because I think my mom didn't know. She, She's not like on Google and doing, you know, research and digging into Nikki's past. Right. So she really met him and just took him, which is a beautiful thing. Right. Took him for who he is standing right. in front of her. And so she really loved him. Aw. And my dad, as soon as he met Nikki, did too. But. Initially, you know, I, of course, I'm, I wasn't going to introduce them until it was serious. Right. So I think because he knew the background yeah. of probably not so much Nikki, but just the band in yeah. general. That's scary. Yeah. That it's your only daughter. And especially like only because, child, only daughter. Yeah. And that's, it's, it, it I. And you yeah, were 25. He was, he was freaked out. You were 25. That's so young to be, you know, like. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Yeah. How was your first date? Like when you guys went on your first date, was it was it awesome? Did you guys click right away? We, so we, our first date was at the, here in Calabasas. Was it? Which place? It was where Tosca Nova is now. Oh, was it something else? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. But it was an Italian restaurant. Aww. Yeah. And Aww. so, our, our, I, we were introduced by a mutual friend, but it wasn't a setup. Uh-huh. And. At least, I don't know. Who knows what he told Nikki? Right. And but for me, it wasn't. Right. It was more that I think you guys will hit it off as friends, and um, you're very social. Yeah. And at that at that time, I was living in West Hollywood. I just moved back to LA from the East Coast, and my our friend is is in New York. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, long story made short. Driving, getting ready. To go to so first we were gonna get coffee and then it turned into which felt safe yeah to meet someone that you just meeting you, yeah you've only spoken to over the phone right and so it turned into dinner and I was getting all dolled up I think my girlfriend came over or something to drop something off and she's like where are you going oh well Nikki and I are going to dinner because I told her about him. She's like, you're totally going on a date. No, I'm not. It's just, no, nope. it's just like a out. friendly yeah. thing. She's, yeah. Okay. You're going on a date. I know you. Yeah. And, and you're all put together. And so the, I'll never forget driving on the 101. Dude, how long is that drive? It's far. Holy <laughs> Especially shit. in traffic. I'm, same thing. When I started dating Tommy, I was like, I almost don't think it's, you're I almost cute, don't think but... I'm going to make, exactly. <laughs> how cute are you? Yeah. It's like for, 40 minutes on 
Yeah. The 101 up to Calabasas. That's with zero traffic. With no traffic, yeah. yeah. Which never happens never unless happens. it's three in the morning. So you're just sitting there and you're like foundations melting Basically. in the sun. It's really fun. So I had a lot of time to think. Right. Oh, well, I guess this is a date. Yeah. But, and I, do, I think I do like him. Were you nervous? Probably as soon yeah. as I realized it was a date. Yeah. 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 Um, And... Yeah, so I got out of my car. We met in the parking lot. It's like so fun whenever I go over there. I've seen the exact aisle that I was parked on. And yeah, we just hit it off. I love that. And then it was just like you just hung out. And then you started talking, hanging out every day. And then you just like, it's like, that's it. That's so fun. Well, actually, we, we, so we were dating. We weren't, I mean, I kind of felt like we were exclusive Uh because I wasn't seeing anyone else. Yeah. And neither was he, but we had, we got in a fight and he was very, which he should be. Yeah. Um, very protective about his kids. He yeah. had been through a lot, a, a divorce of, a few, I don't know, maybe five years, four mm-hmm. years before that. And they'd been through a lot mm-hmm. and as he should have been. Yeah. And he was really just trying to focus on being there for his kids and being super present. Yeah. When he's off the road. And so we got into, a little bit of an argument. His nanny at the time had changed her plans uh-huh. multiple times in one weekend when yeah. he had the kids. And I had planned this whole dinner I was cooking, which like I didn't as a single yeah. girl, you're not yeah. cooking a lot. So it was a big deal going and getting Chilean sea bass yeah. at Whole Foods. And, yeah. you know, I went and bought all the ingredients and was going to bring everything up to his house to cook. And so... The schedule kept getting changed, mm-hmm. and I finally you were just like, dude, lost yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And so he, what happened was he said, "Okay, well, I'm gonna, um, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm gonna come into the city uh-huh. the, since the kids are at, the, and I hadn't met the kids yet. Yeah. So since the kids are at the house this weekend, I'll come into the city. I think Sunday. Yeah. And we'll go out to lunch or whatever. I'll make it up to you. Right. Okay. Cool." So the next day, so now this is, so it, it's been messed up once. Yeah. The next day, he texts me, didn't call me, <laughs> and something else happened oh, no. with, with the nanny schedule. Yeah. That he, like, she had something to do. And I, you know, things get misinterpreted yeah. on text messages, but I basically said, how dare you not, you it, Call you can yeah, call me yeah. and explain it. I'm an understanding person, but just like you think an hour before you're supposed to be here, you're just gonna shoot me a casual <laughs> Yeah. Text. I, actually I can't make it. You're all ready. The yeah, sea bass is no, like five like, minutes from being done. But yeah. I was all getting ready and yeah. excited and so just probably lost in translation. Right. What I what I meant uh, how he took it and read it was something totally different. Right. Basically like he took it you know, your time with your kids doesn't matter. Something uh, along those yeah. lines, which is not what I said right. or what I meant. Um, so I think he was like, she doesn't get that I have yeah. a family and, yeah. and which I did. Yeah. But so anyway, so we just stopped talking Wow. Yeah, for like almost a month. Aww. And then, and I was really, I realized how much I really liked, liked him. him. Yeah. I mean, I was devastated. Yeah. And I was okay. So I went to Miami for New Year's Uh and that's where I just moved from. And I, I still had to go to my office and organize stuff. And so I went for New Year's and of course, when you see someone that you've dated and you're not together anymore, you really want to put your best foot forward and like, Oh, see what you're missing type thing. No, I ran into him at LAX at 7 30 in the morning for like a really early flight sweats no makeup just randomly ran into him stop yeah that's fate though i know because think about that i know that's crazy and he was taking his kids to mexico and i'm like oh my gosh trying to hey and you're like (laughs) just a mess trying to dodge him like this is not what i pictured i pictured some you know, running into yeah. him and, and just being like, oh, like, oh fancy seeing wait, you What here. was your name? Yeah. 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 Dead. So Love that. that didn't happen. And all the kids are there too. So it's like. Stop. First time meeting them. Uh, you know. Dead. Like, oh, hi, I'm Courtney. Oh my gosh. Okay, it was just Hilarious. So, oh yeah. So 
I got on my plane and like my heart's pounding, pounding. And I think he texts me and, and this is the first time that we'd spoken. Yeah. And said something like, you know, you're a really great girl and hopefully we can stay friends. Something like that. But not, oh, you know, I, I miss I, you. I miss it's you. so good to see How you. Yeah, you. Yeah. 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 No, nothing like Aww. that. So I thought, well, that's a done deal. Yeah. And then I was in Miami and I got a text. So I don't know. God works in mysterious ways. I don't know what happened when he was in Mexico. I still don't know. Yeah. Um, that he decided to revisit the idea of us being together. But so he reached out to me and it was it was like a really cute text that he missed me. Aww. And I was totally taking it back. Yeah. And I got back to LA and then I really made him work for it because I was yeah. Well, we can now. Now I have the upper hand. Well, we can be friends. Yeah, but I'm you not said going you down to be this friends. road again. Yeah, we can be best friends. Best friends. I've benefits. already made us bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. So we went out to Sugarfish, uh -huh. my favorite, and it was supposed to be just like a friendly dinner. Uh -huh. No, no, mm -mm. and that was Sparks that was that. Fine. And then after we kind of got back together, it was like that was it. We both. Knew it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. But I was so upset when we weren't talking. I, I mean, if someone would have told <sighs> me, you're going to end up getting married and, you know, having a child together, I would. You would never, never have thought have, that. No, I wouldn't. No, have I that. know. Because it's like these guys are so, it's so funny. Like, um, even when I first started dating Tommy, he was dating me, Carmen Electra, some other girl, uh, I forget her name, some random girl that he's known for years, and then some other girl he met on. Oh, Raya. he was busy. He was busy. A busy bee. He was busy. And 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 he had just brought Carmen Electra with him to Coachella. And Coachella had just been over. And then we were taught we were we were talking the whole time. And then he like invited me to Wait, how was that for you? What? Knowing that like, he was dating yeah. so many other people. Well, I kind of like was like, it was weird because I was like, he's not my boyfriend because we were just talking. Right. You know, texting. Was he, he was texting me every day, sending me songs to listen to, texting me, you know, we were talking all day, every day. We hadn't hung out. We we'd had only, um, we had been planning to hang out. We hadn't hung out yet. So oh, I hadn't okay. hung out with him. He had met, been met just messaging me. And then I see, you know. Well, I followed, that's a bit easier. Yeah, and I followed him on Instagram dating. and saw that he was like, you know, bringing her to Carmen Electra to, you know, Coachella. And, but he's still messaging me. And then like, you know, he then two other girls I didn't even know about. But he was like, you know, I was such a stalker. I could see whose pictures he was liking. That was when you could see whose pictures you, people liked on Instagram. You can't really do that anymore okay. unless you like really look it up. Anyway, unless you're a real stalker, well, which I could still do because I am a real stalker. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> Just kidding. I believe um, that. I am. I um, believe so, that to be true. So then finally we, we meet up at Pride, which was like, you know, Gay Pride West Hollywood because he was playing drums and I was like doing like something there. I was doing like an event there. And we were both in VIP and like we hung out and then we just like clicked right away. Right. Mm -hmm. But he lived in Calabasas. I lived in West Hollywood and he was still seeing the other girls while him and I were started seeing each other. So now it was like me and like four, three other girls all seeing Tommy at once. And I was like, this is crazy. But he likes, I mean, he couldn't have been spending much time with them because he was spending most of his time with me. Cause I was like, there's not much time in a day and I'm going over there all the time. See, that's it's such a, that's such a weird place to do it. It was a different so place to be in because weird. There's nothing wrong with, you know, when you meet no, someone, you're, you're casually dating. You're just dating. And, yeah. And I, many times I've been dating a couple yeah. of people at once and because it's not rules. serious. Yeah, it's not serious. And but, but those people at that point in my life, I wasn't on social media yeah, at, or they, they weren't. Yeah. And so you don't, it's not in your face. It was in my face. So I saw all the, and the worst part was I would come over after not seeing him for like two days. And then there'd be like, the girls were kind of tactical. They would leave shit. So like Sneaky. in the bathroom, there'd be like a scrunchie or like a new shampoo or like jewel, a necklace. They would leave stuff like they were I'm like sure they didn't leave diamonds. No, not diamonds. <laughs> but there was like a, a necklace, a scrunchie one time, a, a shampoo bottle. And then like him and I were like, you know, we were like 
getting getting slowly getting to know each other better and better and getting along really well. And then I started becoming the one that was almost over every day. And then it became like, I was like, are you, oh, this is what happened. So I was, so then the two other girls were kind of dropping off, you know, but they were still messaging him all the time. I saw his phone like blowing up constantly. And then him and I went to sushi at Bonsai Sushi. I loved that. And we got papped. And then Carmen Electra calls him and she's like, what the fuck? Fuck you, you fucking asshole. I thought we were the only ones dating, blah, blah, blah. She thought he was just dating her. She didn't even know about the other girls. She didn't know about me. She didn't know about the two other girls. I know about everybody. I was like, okay, I know about this bitch. I know about yeah, this Yeah, you bitch. knew. I, I was like taking it like levels, like who I got to get rid of. I'm like, all right, we beat <laughs> level one. But I didn't think I was ever going to beat out Carmen Electra. I'm like, that bitch is so hot. She is, she hot. is hot. You're hot, Carmen. I, I still like her, whatever. She can hate me if she wants. But anyway, <laughs> so, um, and I love Dave Navarro. I love him. I've had him on the podcast. Oh, right. I yeah. love Dave like crazy. So, um, so... <laughs> She freaked out, so she was off. So it's like fucking she unfollowed him, blocked him, check. whatever, check, gone. So one gone. I'm like, ah, two, only two more levels to beat. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so then there was these two other girls, and one girl he had known for years since, like, he, like him and Pam had broken up. How, was she, how old was she? She was pretty. She was th- uh, probably 40s, cute. Um, he had known her and she was, he said he was, she was like the girl that he always called like in between girlfriends. I'm sure she would love to know that. Know right? that. So she was the girl <laughs> that he would call um, in between girlfriends all the time. And then the other girl was some girl that he met on Raya. What, he, what's that? Who, that which is met? the dating app where I met him. And it's just like an exclusive dating app. It's right. like so lame. I remember. It's so lame. And then so he, the other girl was another girl he met on there and he said she was insane. He had brought her to like Vegas with him and he was like, she was crazy like he had to have his bodyguard remove her oh. from her his hotel room in Vegas so she was crazy but he was still kind of she was still sending him like sexy pictures and all the stuff so then oh I remember their names but I'm not gonna say it so then finally I said to him I mean it'd been like a month of us like spending a lot of time together and I was like you know I don't know if like you're still seeing these other girls or what but like he really couldn't have been because it was like I was hanging out with him all the time at that point but it was kind of like I just kind of said to him, like, you want to be together or you want to keep doing this? Because I'm, like, in my 30s, you know, I just turned 30. And I was like, I kind of just want to meet someone cool and have, like, a good relationship. I'd already been single for, like, a year and a half and after getting out of a crazy abusive relationship. And then he was like, yeah, no, I just want to just want to date you. And so then he texts the other girls. This is the funny part. He texts the other girls. I'm ha- I'm seeing someone seriously now, and so this isn't gonna um, work anymore. Okay, so then the one girl is like, okay, whatever. They, Which right. that's a nice thing to do, right? Instead of he did people. Yeah, off. he was really nice. Yeah, the one girl, the Raya girl, was like, okay, bye, kind of. But she would still send like lingerie pics while we were dating, which was kind of weird, and he ended up having to block her. But anyway, I so don't get that. I don't get it either. I I, I just it's so and, disrespectful. And the girls club. Same. Girls have to yeah. stick together. And if someone tells me they're seeing someone, like, yeah. a little what desperate mindset would you ever go, okay, here's a titty pic? Like, that's insane to me, but that was the crazy one. Okay. That he had to have kicked out of his hotel room. And then the other girl was the girl that he's known for years, and she goes, well, do you guys ever need a third? Girl. <laughs> I was like, skirt, what? Like, she no. was like- Tell her, she's like. Definitely not with you. Yeah, she was like, I'm down to like join. And Tommy told me and we were like laughing and he was like, no, 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 she's crazy. Like that that was it. But like fucking nightmare, dude. Isn't it kind of crazy? And now you've been married for two years. Two years and been together four, which is crazy. It's been four already. Yeah, Mm -hmm. we got together in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21. 2017, we started dating. June 2017. Sure. Yeah. Because then we're engaged for a year. And then we've been married for two years. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? crazy. I have the Doesn't picture like when I've we known first you dated. I know. I'm by 2017. Fast. I was so excited when you guys, Yay. when I first met you. I know. It's so, you know, it's so interesting because they've had such like crazy lives. And like, I'm just so glad I have Tommy at this point in his life. And I know you probably feel that way with Nikki, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, other points in in his life. Well, a it wouldn't have made sense right. just with our age difference right. and you too. But 
even if we were closer in age, it would have been fun. At yeah. Diff- a, a few different points, like, but it wouldn't have lasted. I don't think I would have been able to handle Tommy in his 30s. Yeah. Like, I'm already know. so tired. And he has, he has a lot of energy. Nikki, too. I can barely keep up. I'm with like, that. where do they get it from? Are they like, they're they just young spirit, young as fuck. Like he has a younger spirit than me. I need like 10 hours of sleep a night. He's yeah. like six. He's up. He's making coffee. He's cutting bonsai trees. He's making music. I'm like, my hair is all fucked up. I'm like, where's the, I need, I can't even have a, like, I can't even drink coffee. I'm just like, every anxiety. <laughs> I'm like an old woman, and he's is like, your young, mama silly? So she's silly. a silly goose. She's like, yeah, this bitch she's is crazy. Silly. She's like, help me, dead. <laughs> but I mean, it's just so crazy because I'm just so glad I got him at this point because I don't think I could have handled Tommy and his. Or he even says it. He's like, I was a firecracker, like up all night, get up early. Like I can't, I can't even hang right now. I fall asleep during a movie. I know. I'm like an old woman. Anyway, so, I'm with you. I love Me having too. you here. I know. Oh my gosh. This, so fun. this was fun. So fun. And your new puppy. Oh, Teeny the Weenie. Guys, you've seen pictures of Teeny the Weenie. Uh, she, um, she's, she's Teeny the, the Weenie cu- on Instagram. She's the cutest. She's this big. Yeah, she's so this cute. Big. And make sure. But you're the cutest. Nina the Weenie. She's, she's really yeah, cute and too. Nina the Weenie is a good girl. She's my podcast pup. Um, but guys, make sure to follow Courtney if you don't already on Instagram to keep up to date on everything that she has going on in her life. She's. You know, got your beautiful pictures of your family on there and the bouquet box and everything that you're doing. And it's just how to girl on Instagram with a two, the numeric two, not a, you know, not spelled out. So how to at how to girl on Instagram. And then if you guys want um, to check out the bouquet box situation, which is amazing, just www.bouquetbox.com. Um, bouquet is B-O-U-Q-U-E-T. For those of you that don't know how to spell it, because <laughs> fuck, some people are. How do you spell bouquet? Where's the K? Don't you know what? I spell it all day long and still sometimes, still sometimes I leave out the U. It's that word. One of the U's. It's that word that you, like, it's like a weird word, like necessary. Like you're like, how many S's? How many C's? Yeah, like definitely. Can't, uh, I, I, like I, I can't. still can't spell definitely. No. It's ever. Fine. It's ridiculous. Like you think I would figure out how to spell it <laughs> after all these years? Nope. But yeah, I mean, definitely check that out and um, keep up with them on there because she's she's always got cool stuff going on the, uh, um, on her Instagram and always posting really great pics of, you know, you guys are always having fun. And the baby is just, uh, if you're having a rough day and you want to see someone who's living pure joy, it's Ruby. She's dancing and living her best. Dancing at a she's just living her best life, Ruby. Yes. So. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so Love glad we you. finally did this. This is so fun. And so fun. make sure to stay tuned next week, guys, for another episode of Worst First. I love you all. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.